This video is part of the vPython uh, project for physics, and this video is going to talk, take a physics problem, or take a situation actually, turn into a physics question or a physics word problem, and from that it's going to compare how the word problem is usually solved, and then how we're going to solve it using a computer, and kind of the differences between the two. And it's going to be referred to in the second tutorial for the vPython physics project. So let's take a look at our setup. I've got a track that's going to be frictionless, and I've got a, this uh, fan cart. It's pushed to the right, and it's going to have a fan turned on that's going to apply a force pushing it to the left. I've got initial velocity, I've got a mass, and I know the force of the fan, and it's going to happen for two seconds. So somehow I want to model this. So to make sense of this, let's uh, turn this into a word problem. So I'll take an 8 kilogram cart and push it to the right for 0 0.5, uh, at 0.5 meters per second, and the fan is pushing the cart in the opposite direction to the left by a 0 .0 or 0 0.278 newton force. Where is the cart after two seconds, and what does the motion look like? So that's what I'm to look at. Is let's talk about where the cart is after two seconds and do the motion part. And that's what the computer is going to help us to figure out. So when solving the problem, I'll look at what I know. And what I know, the givens are listed up there in red. So I know the initial velocity, the mass. It's two seconds. I want to find out where it is after that two seconds. A strategy for solving this, when I look at this, I see, well, I'm looking for the x, uh, how far it travels. So really what I'd like is that long equation, x equals x naught plus v naught t plus 1 fat squared but I don't have an acceleration. However, I can find that. So I can find the acceleration using f equals ma. So my strategy first is to use f equals ma to find the acceleration, keep that value, and I'm going to use the long equation to find the position after two seconds. So I go through the calculations, I find the acceleration, go through the calculations, and I'll find the displacement after two seconds. So after two seconds, it's 0.3 meters away. But that really doesn't describe what happened, I mean, what the motion looked like. It just shows me the beginning and it shows me the end. So if I want to, I can kind of think about this as a timeline. So here's the time, and I'll have zero seconds on one side and two seconds on the other side. And at zero seconds, I start off with initial velocity and that initial position of zero for both, uh, for the position at least. And the other end of two seconds, it'll have a final position. And I'll put a velocity there, and I'll talk about that in a little bit later, where that comes from. Now what I do is I take the numbers on and I stick them into my equations above and I get my answer of 0.3 meters. But I don't know what happens. Maybe I'd like to know what happens so I can see a little bit better. Let's see where it is after one second. So instead of thinking about it as a two second interval, I'll put it one second in for my time, figure out where it's located. And then if I do that, I can put it for the second second. But to use the second second, I've got to calculate initial velocity. Then I can calculate the second second. Well, instead of doing that, I can actually have the computer do it all for me. I can break it up into smaller sections. So to make it manageable, I'll make it in little units of time, 20 little units of time. So each one of these will be 2 seconds divided by the, my intervals here. And that's going to be 0.1 seconds. So this turns my one calculation into a set of 20 smaller calculations. Great. Um, because I have a computer, that's easy. I just kind of give it the instructions and have it do it however many times it needs to do that. So that's what I want to focus on is that how, it, how it's different. So here's the initial velocity and initial position. I'm going to calculate the, to get a final velocity here after a delta t of 0.1 seconds. Then I'll figure out where it is. Once I figure out where it is, then I'll have the computer move it so I can see what the problem is going to look like. Now for the next time interval, the final velocity for the first, velo for the first time interval becomes the initial velocity for the second time interval. So if it ended up traveling at you know, 1 meter per second after the first delta t, for the second delta t, it starts at 1 meter per second. And then I'll calculate the new final velocity. And with those velocities, I can then calculate the um, change in position. So it starts off at some point, x, and that becomes the new initial position. And then I'll calculate the new final position. And then once I get the calculation, I'll move it to the new final position. And then I'll do the same thing again, the final velocity for the previous time interval becomes initial velocity for the next time interval. And then I'll do the same thing with x. The previous final position for the position becomes the initial position for the next time interval. And I'll do the calculations, and I'll have the computer actually repeat this, because I don't want to do this by hand. And I can actually, with the computer, I can come up with a way to visualize what this is going to look like. So that's what we're after with the computer, is we take this one big problem and break it up into small pieces. Now something cropped up that I didn't realize when I was solving it before. When I was solving it before, I really didn't need to know the final velocity to figure out where it was after two seconds. But this time I do, because of this. Because each time interval has initial velocity. And because it's going faster and faster, every time interval has a new initial velocity. So every tenth of a second time interval, it has a new initial velocity. 
So that means I've got to change my strategy. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to have an intermediate step where I'm actually going to calculate the final velocity. And then I'm going to use that final velocity as the initial velocity for the next section in my long equation x equals x naught plus v naught t plus 1 fat squared. So I've got to make sure I find that initial velocity using my equation. So this is a little bit different from what I was given originally for the computer program. Those are going to be the three steps I'm going to be using in vPython. And in fact, steps two and three, they're the ones that are going to be repeating themselves. So I'm going to keep looping these steps. I'm going to keep finding the final velocity, make it the initial velocity. Then I'm going to use the next equation to find out what the new position is. Then I'm going to move the car. Then I'm going to start all over again, loop all over again. The final velocity became the initial. The final position became the initial. Then I'll calculate the new final velocity for the next unit of time, the new position for the next unit of time. Then I'll move the cart. And I'll keep this process going on and on and on. So that's how I'm going to use the computer program. The key thing is I can take anything. I can take velocities. I can take uh, distances. I can take times. And I break it up into smaller pieces and do this calculation that loops around on itself over and over and over. And the computer would do the math for me. And that's what we're going to go through in the tutorial is how to set all that up, learn a little bit about the language, and see how it works.